In this session, I'm going to be joined by Sarah Robson, Head of Sales at On Device Research. And she's here to explore in more detail exactly the best ways in which we can measure out of home, digital and social media. So Sarah, perhaps we can start by exploring in more detail the best ways in which we measure the out of home media. Yes, thank you, Lisa. So traditionally, out of home um, advertising effectiveness has been done using recall. So either someone recalled the actual advertisement or someone recalls being in a certain location where the creative was on. Um, I firmly believe, though, basing it on recall isn't robust enough. I think when you're measuring out of home exposure, you have to measure it passively. The reason I say that is, for example, when we look at our on-device research norms, we know using tracking technology, for example, that 19% of people who haven't been exposed to advertising claim to have seen it. And equally, we also know that only 24% of people who we know have been exposed to advertising actually do recall it. So human memory is flawed. Um, also, we've discovered from our norms database that even though you can't recall seeing the advertising, it does have an effect on your brand metrics. For example, when we looked at our norms database it, for purchase intent, we see a two percentage point uplift in purchase intent for those who we know have been exposed, but actually haven't been able to recall the advertising. So basing it on recall alone isn't enough. So you have to come up with another way of measuring out of home exposure. This can be done in a variety of ways, but one way is using a GPS tracker, for example, which shows that someone's been in a location where the advertising was on. So for example, at on-device research, we have an SDK in our app that tracks someone's location 24 seven down to five meters. So if you overlay the lats and longs of the outdoor creatives to someone's geo behavior, you can then say whether someone has been passively exposed or not. We also, if it was for a digital um, out of home screen, we can also overlay a dwell time, say for example, a minute. So if we know the screen moves every 10 seconds, then someone will have had a high opportunity to see that advertisement. We then have that as our control group because we know someone has had a good chance of seeing that advertising. We then match that against a balanced control group and we balance on all the normal factors such as demographics, category use, brand use, but also geo behavior. So we look for people who, who live, work, commute within sort of one and a half kilometers of the people who are in the exposed group. So you're looking at similar groups and the only difference there is the fact that someone has been exposed and the other person has. Okay, that's great. But I would imagine these techniques are fairly different when it comes to measuring digital advertising. Can you explain a little bit more? Yes, so the principle is fundamentally the same that you have to measure it passively. This is normally done through clever technology whereby you can put, for example, a pixel on the creative, let it play out, that pixel then fires on exposure and you match that against a research panel. It's important with digital that you are getting the exposed group from an actual exposure, again, not just based on recall, but also that you're measuring the entire campaign. So for example, you should have a pixel that works across in app, works across mobile and desktop browser as well. Okay, that makes sense. But how does it work when it comes to the fast paced nature of social media? Yeah, so social media platforms actually offer quite often their own um, brand studies, which they base on control and exposed. But the issues there are often the brand study itself is only the brand metrics, so maybe five questions and you're not covering the creative element of the campaign, it's important that you do both. But equally, it's also the actual social platform measuring their own success or not. And so it can be biased in that way because fundamentally they have a vested interest to say that that platform has done well. But the issue you've got with social media platforms is you can't use the normal tracking technology that you would use on other display ads. And that's because often the social media platform is a walled garden, won't accept pixels from third parties. So you, you have to think of a different way of measuring exposure. So at On Device Research, we partner with an ad replacement company that allows us to expose somebody in context to the, to the creatives. So the, the way this works is a panelist will be directed to a social platform's feed or YouTube channel. And then in that feed, the ads that normally would appear get replaced with the ad that you want to test. 
So someone effectively is seeing that ad in context to the panelist. All they know is they're being directed to Instagram, TikTok, and so on. And then they see the ad. Also, it's important that when you're using that methodology that you also target the people that are in the original target group of the social platform. So we pre-screen people to make sure that we are hitting the right type of people first with the creative. So again, you haven't biased anything. And then once you've exposed somebody, we, a normal methodology would be um, adopted whereby we question them 24 to 48 hours after exposure and match those answers to a balanced control group. That's a fantastic overview. So perhaps now you're able to summarise for us the key ways in which to best measure out of home, digital and social media. Yes, yeah, so firstly, it's really important that you measure advertising exposure passively, that you're not using recall as a proxy for exposure, because as I've mentioned, human memory is flawed. Um, so it's important that you measure it that way. Secondly, it's important that you use a long form questionnaire that you're covering both the brand metrics and also the creative metrics, because that gives you a true picture of how effective a campaign is. Thirdly, it's really important that it's independent, that you haven't got your own media platform or publisher saying that it's done well, that you get an independent voice on that. And lastly, it's really important that you're using the same type of questionnaire across all the platforms that you're measuring. So you don't want to have one on one done a different way and one on another done a different way, because if you wanted to compare the channels to see whether social media, out of home or digital, which one's performing the best, you need to have a robust methodology that's consistent across all those platforms. Thank you, Sarah. We hope you found this short video today useful, but if you have any further questions on how to best measure out of home, digital or social media, then please do contact us or visit us today at ondeviceresearch.com